Yo, I literally don't think you understand how hot it is, but it's hot. When I tell you there is literally construction outside my window, I mean there is literally construction right outside my window. Guys, look at my look at my sweatshirt. It's a skeleton drinking pumpkin coffee. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Chloe and I am super excited that you clicked on this video and that you are here and we are going to do this in-depth Bible study together. There's construction. <laughs> Y'all, I just want this video to be the most chill thing ever. I have my tea, I have the Harvest Ball tea blend or something from Trader Joe's. I get it every single year and I always stock up on it because it's the best tea literally in the world so i always like buy that in bulk when it comes into season but today we are going to do an in-depth bible study and i am super excited these are literally one of my favorite videos to film for you guys because i love like digging into scripture and preparing something for you guys to learn from and to share with you guys what i learned because it's always super interesting things that I find when I do research for these videos because I really want to give you guys like the meat of the passage and like the meat of the scripture and so that's what I did here and we're gonna go through Psalms 1 it's a really short passage it's only six verses yes you heard me right six verses but let me tell you that these verses are literally jam-packed with information and these verses are literally jam-packed full of meaty word and truth so we're just going to literally jump right in to this Bible study I have a lot of stuff that I want to go over with you guys and that I want to teach you guys from the things that I learned from this passage because it was super interesting when I just took the time to research everything for you so like I said we're going to do Psalms 1 today this is one of my favorite verses of all time this is something that's been super prevalent in my life in this season of my life and it's just a message that i really really want to get out there and i cannot stress enough so i have my bible right here i have the esv journaling bible if you guys don't know what journaling bible means it just means that in the sides and the margins it has room to write and space to take notes and to annotate and highlight and draw and be creative and paint and things like that which if you know me that's what I love to do. I love being creative. I will have my Bible linked down below if you guys want the link to the exact Bible, but this is just an ESV Bible. So if you guys want to grab your Bibles, grab your tea, your coffee, grab whatever snacks you want, and we're just going to literally dig into the scriptures. So I'm just going to literally start by just reading through the passage straight through. Um, if you guys want to follow along, ESV version. If you guys are reading a different version, that's all right too. Just follow along the best you can. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. That is an intense verse, if I do say so myself. So I know that like some of that is kind of scary, like, oh my gosh, the wicked will perish and all oh, the stuff, it's kind of scary. But there is so much more to this verse than what meets the eye and what meets the ears when you first hear the verse. I did a lot of in-depth studying and a lot of research on this verse and I actually got a lot. So the first thing that I like to do just like when I'm in depth studying on my own is I always like to write out the entire um, scripture that I'm studying and that I'm focusing on, if that makes sense, and end up studying. So what I did was I wrote the entire passage out on this piece of paper, literally just wrote it down, and then I categorized and I highlighted, basically color coordinated each section so that I split it up into five or six different sections. So here you can see that I have it split up into six different sections because from what I read, first of all, there's six different verses, so six sections make sense, but um, each section that I actually did actually has a different focal point, if that makes sense. So obviously, going into this verse, you know that there's going to be six separate sections because there are six different verses, but that's not the same for every single passage of the Bible. Sometimes you'll have five verses straight, ten verses straight, 
20 verses straight that are all talking about the same thing but in this specific passage i felt like each verse and each section was talking about something different so the main part that i want to talk about is actually in verse three and that is that he the one that delights in the lord is like a tree planted by streams of water so one thing i like to do when i'm in depth studying is i like to look at the definitions to certain words in the passage. So this one, it's he who delights in the Lord is the one that planted like a tree. And so I was like, well, what does it mean to actually delight in the Lord? You know, I know what delight means, but I want you to know what the actual definition itself meant. And the actual definition for delight is to find great pleasure in. And so the one that finds great pleasure in the law of the Lord is the one that's planted like a tree. So I'm thinking, okay, that's great. I want to be the one that delights in the Lord. I want to be the the one that finds great pleasure in the Lord. But why do I want to be a tree planted by streams of water? Right off the bat, every single time I've ever read this verse, I thought, okay, yeah, I want to be planted by streams of water, which means I am planted by the source, by the source of life, which is the river of life, which is Jesus. But I wanted to take a step further and figure out really why would I want to be a tree planted by streams of water. And so what I did was I looked up on Google, just any source, I looked up commentaries in this verse, and I tried to figure out why a tree would want to be planted by streams of water. What it actually says is that trees slow storm water runoff and reduce the threat of flooding. And trees break the force of wind to help the topsoil in place. Their roots bind the soil that's contributing to stabilization. I read that and I was like, <laughs> that's so good so if you guys are confused as to what that means what it is is this is blessed is the one who finds great pleasure in the law of the lord for he is the one that's that's planted by streams of water when you are a tree that is planted by streams of water you have such a good foundation you are planted on such a good spot that you are actually more likely to reduce the risk of a flood coming and a flood overtaking and destroying you if you are a tree that is planted by living streams of water you actually are heightened so like a tree if it's by a stream of water it's going to be a little bit above it and so what it's saying is that it actually blocks the winds that would shift and move around the top soil and so basically what it means is you want to be planted by streams of water because one you are able to lower the risk of being completely destroyed by floods and lower the fact of being shifted and moved and shaken from the topsoil. So I thought that that was super, super interesting. And so that was just the first part of verse three, which is he's planted by streams of water. Moving on to the next part, it says, he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither in all that he does prosper. So the next part I wanted to focus on is that it yields its fruit in season. So going off of that, it's saying, since you delight in the Lord, you are the one that gets to be planted by streams of water. So already you're doing pretty good. You're planted somewhere where nothing can destroy you. Nothing is going to overtake you and ruin you or your tree. But this next part talks about is that you will yield your fruit in your season. What it's saying here is that the environment that you are planted in and the environment that you are rooted in is going to determine the amount of fruit and the kind of fruit that you're able to produce in that season. Just because you're not able to produce the same amount or the same kind of fruit as somebody else does, doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong or doesn't mean that you're planted in the wrong place. Maybe it just means that you're in a different bearing season than someone else. There is a season for everything in life. Like every single thing in your life, there's a specific season for it. Maybe, and most of the times, your season isn't going to look like someone else's. I know this can have a lot to do with comparison and a lot of comparison between lives and success and money and looks and there's just a lot of things that you can compare yourself to in this world but here it is saying that you will bear your fruit in season you know when you're planted and you're rooted in rich soil and by streams of water that doesn't just mean that you're you're going to produce fruit all the time and you're just going to be super successful and you're going to produce all this fruit all the time and a bunch of fruit all the time and all that stuff no that's not what it's saying at all what it's saying is that you are rooted and you're planted in a good spot but that doesn't mean you're not going to have seasons that change your bearing. That doesn't mean you're going to have seasons where you can take on more than you can in a different season. Your producing of fruit is going to look completely different than someone else's. You might be in a season where it's a very dry season and maybe you're not able to produce the same amount as somebody else, but that's okay. That just means that your bearing season is different than theirs. I don't know if you guys are understanding what I'm saying, but basically what I'm saying is that depending on what season you're in, 
with your tree and what season of life you're in, it's going to determine how much fruit you're going to be able to produce and what kinds of fruit you're going to be able to produce. The second part of that sentence is, and its leaf does not wither. And what that means is that just because you're not producing fruit doesn't mean that your leaves are going to wither. Even in those like off seasons of life and even when the, the seasons of life where you feel like you're not producing the same amount of fruit as someone else or as you used to be or as you can in the future doesn't mean that your leaf is going to wither. Our leaves, which is really our entire making and who we are, is not going to be destroyed and withered just because we're not bearing fruit. When we are connected to the source and we are planted by the streams of living water, our leaves can't be withered. Now that's not to say our leaves can't be a little shaken in the wind sometimes and move around sometimes in the wind and have its seasons of being more thriving than not. It just means that it's not going to wither and it will not be destroyed. So what I really got out of this passage is to not judge someone by how much fruit they're able to produce in that season. You know, maybe their season that they're going through is just a really hard season and it's really dry for them and they're actually not able to produce the same amount as they used to be. And that's okay. I feel like we live in this toxic environment in society where everything in you and your worth is determined and is tied to success and how much you're able to produce and how much you're able to do and how much you can contribute to society when really every single person is in a different season and a different bearing season and no one can compare how much they can produce to somebody else. Not every single person thrives in every single environment. It's the same thing with trees, like it's talking about here. Not every single tree can do well in the desert, you know? Not every single person is gonna be multifaceted in every single area of their life and in every single season. So you know, maybe you're in a season where emotionally and spiritually, you're in the desert and you actually can't thrive in that kind of environment. And so you need to wait until you're out of the desert, out of that season, in order to be able to produce the the amount that you're supposed to produce. But that doesn't mean that anything is wrong with you. That doesn't mean you're planted somewhere wrong. That doesn't mean you're rooted somewhere wrong. That doesn't mean that you are in the wrong environment. It's just sometimes some people are going to have seasons of more success than others. And you have to let that happen and it's gonna be okay. And you have to be okay not comparing what you can do to somebody else. And so that's what I really got of this message and that's what really was speaking to me in this season because I feel like it's hard when you're constantly comparing yourself to how much success someone's having, how many followers someone has, how many likes someone gets, how many views they get, how much money they can make, how many jobs they can have, how many friends they have. There are just so many things that you can compare yourself to. And when we do that, it's so toxic because truly, not everyone thrives in every single environment and not every tree thrives in every single environment. So moving on to the last part of verse three, and that is that in all that he does, prospers. I thought that that was really, really important. And honestly, that's the most important thing to tie this entire verse together. And that is when you do produce that fruit and when you are in a bearing season where you are thriving and you are in that environment where you are able to produce a lot and you're able to produce good quality and you're able to do that because your environment is allowing you to do that, what you produce is going to prosper and all that you do is going to prosper. When we remain rooted and we remain delighting in the Lord, that will allow us to be planted by streams of water and we are planted by streams of water. That means we will have bearing seasons where all that we do will prosper and that is a promise from the Lord. So that is an in-depth study of just basically one verse. All that was really tying into just one verse and that was Psalms 1-3 and that was just so impactful to me. I hope it was impactful to you and I hope that you got something out of it. The biggest thing that I learned in this whole thing was that Different fruits and different trees are created for different seasons. What I want you to get out of this is to know that you do not need to compare how much you are able to produce right now in this season, in this month, and in this year to somebody else. Maybe you're walking through a season where you are not able to produce that much and that is okay. There's no shame for how much you're able to produce. There's no shame for how much you can't produce. <laughs> but as long as you are delighting and you are meditating on the law of the Lord, you will be planted by streams of water and you will thrive in your leaf your leaf will never wither. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you guys really got something out of that because that actually was really helpful to me and that's something that's speaking directly to me in this season. And so 
If you guys enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a like and comment down below. Um, it would mean a lot to me and it helps me out a ton. And it also lets me know if you guys like these kinds of videos so I can keep making more of them because I love making them and I love preparing for them. And so if you guys enjoyed them too, then I would love to be able to become family and become friends with you guys and just share these videos and put them out there for you guys. I hope that today that you remember that you are loved and you are chosen and you are called for such a time as this. And remember that the Lord took out a moment in time to create you intricately. And so I love you guys more than you'll ever know. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>